This is the story of a mouse, a squirrel, a dog, and a girl. A girl named Kate D. Camillo. Katrina Elizabeth D. Camillo was born on March 25, 1964, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Kate spent much of her childhood ill, and after five winters of suffering with chronic pneumonia, her doctor suggested a warmer climate. So in 1969, Kate moved with her mother Betty and older brother Kurt to Claremont, Florida. Kate credits her sickly childhood for helping her become an author. With so much time being stuck in bed, she learned to entertain herself at a young age by reading. For many years, Kate would visit Cooper Memorial Library twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday. However, one of her favorite places to read was the tree fort in her backyard, where she would spend hours lost in her books. As she grew, Kate decided she wanted to be a writer. For nearly a decade, she worked odd jobs, including in a bookstore, where she was assigned to work around children's books. Although she accrued nearly 400 rejection letters, Kate was persistent. And in the year 2000, her work was finally published. Because of Winn-Dixie, the story of a young girl who moves to Florida and finds a stray dog was named a 2001 Newbery Honor Book as one of America's best children's books of the year. This would launch Kate DiCamillo into the spotlight of the children's literature community. I don't really like to read that much, but when I read this book, like I was sick and I brought it home to read, and I like read in that book in bed the whole time because that was like a really good book and I liked it. So it was one of my most favorite books I ever read. I like the story of Dixie because I can imagine all this stuff that's happening and I like how she does the words and express and explains it and that's just my favorite part of it. Um, I liked how Katie Camillo um, told the story it was it had a lot of details so I could picture it very well in my mind. It kind of talks about mistakes and how you can get over them like, and stop from doing them. Kate D. Camilla's place in children's literature history was cemented a few years later when she published the story of a mouse, a princess, some soup, and a spool of thread. The Tale of Despero won the 2004 Newbery Medal as that year's top children's book in America. Uh, the Tale of Despero is a book about a mouse that doesn't fit in with anyone. In fact, it's about, it's about three different people that don't fit in, and they kind of break the ordinary caste system that they're born into, and they, they rise to be better and learn to live together. The mouse was trying to kill all the rats so he could go save the rats. In this book, The Tale of Despero, she talks a lot about stories and how stories can make an impact on you. And so I talked to my students about that. And in this book, the author is speaking to the readers, saying, reader, this is what happened. Or reader, do you think this will happen? So I love that it's talking to them and they can answer those questions and think, I am a reader. I am reading this book and this story is touching my life. It's fancy, it's about adventure. What more is there to love about it? She was trying to fight the rats to get to the princess to save the princess because she got into the dungeon. I think this book is great for students. In fact, I'm planning on a small group reading it for literature circles later this year when we do our Middle Ages unit. I think it's great for kids because it's got clean language, it's a good story, there's a lot of voice, excellent word choice, and I think a lot of situations that the kids can relate to even though it is about animals for the most part. Kate continued publishing many other books for young readers. Among these, was the novel The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, the story of a cold-hearted China rabbit. 
She also wrote a series of early chapter books for beginning readers about a pig named Mercy Watson. I love everything I've read of Kate's, but I'm probably the most passionate about her Mercy Watson series. I love that series because they're a little bit longer than like the Frog and Toad books, and I like that they still have colored pictures, and they're a little more sophisticated. And that series really fills a void that we've had in children's literature. You know, we've had the really simple four chapter chapter books, and we've had the ones that are 89 chapters, but we haven't had that middle ground. I and mean, I wish we had a lot more like it, but I'm glad we've got Mercy Watson. Flora and Ulysses tells the story of a young, self-proclaimed, natural-born cynic and her pet superhero squirrel, who gained his powers after being sucked up by a vacuum cleaner. And holy begumba! In 2014, Kate DiCamillo became only the sixth person in history to win more than one Newbery Medal. It's about a squirrel that gets sucked up gets powers, he can fly and type because a poetry book gets sucked up in the vacuum too. The girl Flora named him Ulysses and um, they found out that her mom is the arch nemesis of Ulysses and uh, Flora reads a lot of comics and uh, her mom wants to kill Ulysses. The funny part was the uh, squirrel, oh, I mean, the cat landed on the dad's head, and the squirrel came and grabbed him off and threw the cat in the hall. Kate DiCamillo's legacy will forever live on through her books. All of Kate DiCamillo's books are, I like how varied they are. Um, they're not just for boys, they're not just for girls, they're not just for women. You know, they never, they never have one target audience. Um, and they all tell a good story. I find that they frequently appear on the read aloud list in my classroom. Um, I think that she's a really good author, so I kind of want to read more of her books to find out what they're about, how she does it. The way it is written, and I like the way the author really thought about writing the book and then wrote it. I think Kate D. Camille is a good author, and I think that she should keep writing books. And I'd like just like to say thank you, Kate D. Camille, for being such a great author and inspiration to me. They're really good. Yeah. They seem almost real, like they would really happen. I, as a teacher, love reading her books as read-alouds to my students. I love the connections that we can make and I use them to incorporate writing and reading into our lessons.